and raises up to reach a people, to change things, even a whole generation. There's a call to come up, and there's a call to come out. And Moses best exemplifies these two calls. And how you respond to these two calls determines the intensity of God's touch in your life. How you respond to this call to come up. The scripture says of Moses, the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount. And the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mountain. And Moses went up. And the people stood afar off and Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. He's called out of his busyness to start an unshackled pursuit after God and to be called into his presence and become a praying man. His own father, while Jephthah chided him, rebuked him kindly that he was too busy. He said, be thou for the people of God word. Let others be appointed to bear the burdens of the people. In other words, he said to his father-in-law, why don't you shut yourself in with God? You can still be concerned for the people. You can still have hands on, but you're going to wear yourself out. You're going to wear the people out. You go to God. You go to the mountain. Moses placed all counseling and arbitration in the hands of his associates and those who work with him. And Moses went up unto God and went near to where God was. Folks, that's a message in itself. Moses went up unto God, and he went near to where God was. See, the scripture said, chosen and caused to approach to dwell in his presence. Not every man who's called up to prayer, not every man who receives this inner wooing of the Holy Spirit to be a man of prayer, to seek him as never before, to know the times to come to the end of himself and say, God is going to take more than I've been giving you. It's going to take more time, more quality time than I've been willing to give you. I can't be on my own agenda and expect to make a mark, a humble mark, not to be somebody, but even, oh God, to be a vessel, an instrument that you use in these last days. And so many people have been called to a life of prayer, called to come up to the mountain. And they went so far. And every man, every woman who's called to seek the face of God, not all of them go to the mountain. The majority go halfway up. And there they stop. They don't respond to this call. How many times has God called you, sir? And ma'am, how many times has the Holy Spirit says, I want to lay my hand on you. I want you to be such a man of prayer that your life has changed. Your family knows it. God knows it. Everybody around you knows it. And every time you stand in the pulpit, there's a word that touches the heart. And he's called you out of the world and out of your business and out of your own agenda. And he's spoken to your heart many times. Has come to the mountain. Come away with me. Come up. And you see, God gives that call to those that he wants to use. And many respond. Moses was not the only man that went up the mountain. There were others called. And he, speaking of God, said to Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, the seventy elders of Israel, and worship you far off. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, for they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. You see, God had a wonderful plan for all of them. He wanted to take them all to the top of the mountain. He wanted them all to come down with their sins, with power over their sins and their iniquity. He wanted them to come out of his presence with that glow that Moses came out. The scripture is clear on that. Here's the promise that he made to Aaron and his sons. I will sanctify the tabernacle, the congregation, and the altar. I will sanctify also both Aaron and his sons to minister unto me in the office of the priest. He said, I want you to become ministers to me. Shut in with me, ministering to me. That was the call to Nadab and Abihu. And he said, I will make you priest unto me, to the elders. He said, I'll make you priest unto me, a holy nation. So why were they told when they got halfway up the mountain, worship me afar off, don't come near me. This is God speaking. You cannot come up to the top of the mount. Only Moses shall come up. 
one of them called. Everyone promised by God he was going to touch their lives. He was going to use them in a, in a high order that they would be ministers unto him. And then halfway up, the Lord says, Hey, Dab, by who, Aaron? He said, For the elders, you're not coming. Why was Moses the only one invited to go to the top of the mountain, shut in with the glory? These men didn't have their heart in it. God knew what was brewing in their hearts. He brings them halfway up, hoping that in his utter holiness, in his presence, because God appeared to them and ate with them, and they saw a sapphire path leading right into a dark cloud, and they knew, no man has seen God, but they knew he was there. You would think that you and I, if we were there, we would fall on our face in the presence of utter holiness and righteousness that we would fall, those things hidden in our hearts would be exposed, and we'd cry, my God, have mercy. But in the presence of an almighty, holy God, they were unmoved, and their hearts, full of sin, were totally unmoved. He brought them halfway up that he may take them all the way, that he would convict them by his holiness because he loved these men. He doesn't give up on his servants. He loves them. He loves them to the end. Please understand and know that God loves you. He loves me. No matter what we're going through, no matter what we may be enduring, God calls you to the mountain. They may deal with you in love and in His holiness, not to judge you, but to give you power and authority in His name and let your face shine with His glory. They are exposed to this utter holiness as if God is saying to them, Brethren, there's something in your heart keeping you from a full revelation. There's a besetting sin keeping you from intimacy. You can't be intimate with, intimate with me unless you break. There's Aaron. He's a man whose heart is tainted with jealousy over his brother, Moses. He fears man more than God. And he has a tendency towards sensuality. He stripped the people naked, remember. Nadab and Abihu, they had the seed of lust and adultery, fornication. They were hardened in their lust. Folks, if God in his utter holiness couldn't reach them, no preacher could ever reach them, no prophet. What a horrible place to be. They had not an ounce of fear of God in them. The 70 elders, they're not under authority because they're thinking, I'm as holy, we're as holy and righteous as Moses and that came out in their rebellion later. God's warning these chosen men. He's given them a mercy call. They should have been slain, but instead he reveals himself to them. Halfway up the mountain, halfway to the touch of God, halfway to the fullness of his presence. They saw the God of Israel, and under his feet a paved work of sapphire stone, and upon the nobles of the children of Israel he laid not his hand. And Moses went up into the mount of God, and he said unto the elders, Tarry ye here for...